the Book Fix podcast, a podcast where we... Maybe I should start because you, you sound sick. <laughs> wait, 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 you can't just cut me off. Okay, wait, you sound no, wait, sick. Let me sound more enthusiastic. Let me sound more enthusiastic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, try, try harder. <laughs> just be better than you are. Okay. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in. <laughs> I feel like it just adds to just the layer of elephants that are currently in this we room. We have so many fucking elephants in this room right now. First of all, our audio has been fucking with us for the past, like, Two weeks, I think. I don't know. I've lost track. And not and not just one of us. It's just both of us. It's this both hasn't of been, us. It hasn't been a week for, you know, good technical stuff. Everything's no. just been going to shit. No. And, and I, I, like, I like how... Hold on. Hold on. Hmm. I like how that was your first elephant in the room and not the fact that I'm fucking dying right now. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. Yes, Chelly <laughs> is really sick right now. Chelly gets sick a lot when she has time off, so... If you it's hear her sick again in the future, just be like, oh, it's spring break. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably not doing anything. Dude, I don't even know where to start. It's mm-hmm. been such a freaking month. And I like keep looking at the fucking calendar and I'm like, how is it barely not even halfway? How is it not even halfway? I so funny I'm that you say dying. that because I feel the opposite. I feel like it's flying by. and Not me. <laughs> Yeah, so we've just been having a lot of problems, and um, yeah, thank you for being patient. Sorry. I know. We it happened Originally, with Honey Girl, originally, the issues were with my mic. There was a lot of static, whatever, and we filmed it again, and it was fine. We posted it up, and then we filmed Skin of the mm, Sea. Actually. And let me just no, say- No, 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 Wait, you're going, you're going ahead of yourself. We re- oh wait, there we, was issues with that. We refilmed Honey Girl, okay, refilmed, and then for yeah. some reason there was a portion of it when we were talking about the book tea that just went like blank. Like there was the like we spoke about it, but there was no yes. audio for some reason. And but the rest of the audio is connected to that audio, and for some reason worked. But yeah. that section didn't. Yeah, which was the book tea. So I feel like we were bewitched. We were. Yeah, and we. Cut out the book tea, but then we were like, oh, we should talk about it in Skin of the Sea only mm-hmm. because we don't want people to think that that never happened. Yeah. So let's mention it during our Skin of the Sea film. So we filmed Skin of the Sea, we recorded, and it was, dare I say magical? It, it was really magical. was. Okay. <laughs> it was such a good episode. Like, I really enjoyed filming that with you, mm-hmm. and then... It feels so bad because we had filmed um, Skin of the Sea and I uploaded my portion of it. So it was an hour and 20 minutes or so of me, right? And I uploaded it and then we hung out. And while we were hanging out, I saw that it kept saying like error in the upload. And I was like, okay, well, maybe it's just, I just need to do it again. You know, sometimes that happens. So then we I got home. Well, we, we left each other like it was pretty late in the night. Uh, and it was so great to catch up with you. Loved seeing you. But then I tried uploading it again and I and it said complete. So I was like, okay, great. Cause it takes a second to like process it. So then I go to bed. I t- oh well before I go to bed, I text you. I'm like, okay, it should be up soon. Then I go to bed and I wake up, I look at my emails, and I see that it said like error processing the episode. And I was like, what? So I opened up my audio and there's absolutely no wavelengths like nothing at all like it's like it's like I didn't it's like I didn't even connect a microphone to it or something I'm so confused because I checked it like 10 times but yeah it just has not been our week Uh, but we're here it does suck but I mean it happens this is most likely going to be going up on a Tuesday so Mm. happy Tuesday guys happy Tuesday hope you enjoyed the Um, super bowl (laughs) um today we are going to be talking about skin of the sea by natasha bowen Mm -hmm. so normally we start these off by saying a spoiler free summary and then we guess 
how the other person feels about the book because we don't tell each other yeah. before. Mm-hmm. And again, like last week, which is I'm getting deja vu because with Honey Girl, we had we already knew because we had filmed it already. So again, we already know how the other person feels. But I do want to say yeah. that I guessed Chelly right, and honestly, that's all that matters. And I do want to say that I guessed Yahira 100 percent right. No, you didn't. Because no one, because no one can <laughs> prove that or disprove it. You said you weren't gonna <laughs> gaslight me in this episode. You liar. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> she, oh my God. You know, I actually have it on here that you did. So. I don't Insert know what you're the talking clip about. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't we start off with our spoiler free summary? Um, you gave it last time. So go ahead if you want to um, give your same summary. Okay. So we want to apologize beforehand if we butcher these names. Um, oh, yeah. You listen to the audio book. Audio. I didn't, but I did look up pronunciations afterwards. I I don't think these are going to be perfect, though. But okay, so the main character's name is Simi Del. Simi Dele. Or Simi. And she Mm -hmm. was remade as a Mami Wata, which translates to Mother of Water, which means she's a mermaid. And at the beginning of the story, her sole purpose was to gather the souls of slaves that get tossed out of the ships and pass in the sea. She would collect their souls to guide them to Alu Dumer. Alu Dumer is an omnipotent deity, and he oversees the Orisas, which are spirits that keep things in order, as well as punish anyone out of line. When Simi saves Cola from dying, it causes a ripple effect due to the law that she unintentionally broke, which puts all of the Mami Wata in danger. Simi goes on this quest with Cola and hopes to summon Alu Dumer to ask for forgiveness. But in order to do that, she needs obsidian rings as a piece of the summoning ritual. And Cola happens to know where they're at. Nice. That is a good summary, but this book is super dense. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend maybe go read it because even though we are going to spoil the fuck out of it right now, it's still not even going to touch the surface of this book. So go read it because it will make it a lot easier for you to understand the next part of our podcast. Yeah, and we would say if you enjoy fantasy stories, if you enjoy Mm -hmm. mermaid stories... Um, mm-hmm. the hero's journey trope, then we would definitely recommend this book for you. Yeah. And I think we should just start because I don't think we have to guess each other's ratings. No, but, <laughs> but you know what? We're not going to tell anybody our ratings. So, okay. That's fine with me. Why don't we just start by talking about our main character, Simi, okay. which Yahira just said, uh, Simi is a mommy Wata, which is a, mermaid who collects those who didn't have proper burials who are thrown in the sea Mm -hmm. and just for like the time reference this is around the 1400s when portugal was first taking people from africa to sell them as slaves in europe Mm -hmm. so the people that she collects are usually people that um, are thrown off of slave boats and Mm -hmm. this beginning of the story is so well written because it's just her collecting a woman who was thrown out of a slave boat Mm -hmm. um, and is dead. And she's so like transfixed, so torn. Yeah. Transfixed and torn about it because she doesn't know why she feels connected to this lady. If she never knew this lady Mm -hmm. and you just get a sense of how lonely Simi feels because after a while, she's beginning. Yeah. After a while, she's like, Oh, My mom used to look like that when I was human, but I'm not human anymore and I'm never going to have a mom anymore. Yeah. It's such a fucked up feeling. Yeah. And when she was remade into a mommy Wata, her memories actually went away from her. Like she doesn't recall much of anything at all. The only times that she gets glimpses of her memories is, is when she's outside of the ocean, like when she's basking in the sun, like on the sand or something. And she does Mm -hmm. like, she does go from having legs to having a tail once she's in the water. So she can like blend in if needed, but really her main purpose in the beginning of the story is just to collect souls and then pass them on to Yemoja, which she is a, one of the Orisas. 
Yes. So just to let you know, too, Simi is the only Mami Wata who feels the need to become human often Mm -hmm. because we do get her having a conversation with another Mami Wata. And it's just seen as weird. The fact that she wants to be a human, like it's not something that Mami Watas really want. Yeah, and I think it's not really that she wants it, but she kind of has this weird feeling of, oh, I really, I I feel like I'm missing something. And Mm, because she doesn't immediately remember, you know, her humanity yet. So a lot of the other Mami Watas or even Yamoja is just like, well, you need to just let it go because you need to focus on what you're supposed to be doing, which is just collecting the souls. Yep. So... That's basically see me the the beginning of the story see me. Mm-hmm. I want to say that when I started this story, I immediately liked her. Mm-hmm. I felt like she was a really sad character, and I think it's pretty consistent throughout because even though she does build relationships throughout the story, mm-hmm. she still remains lonely because she knows that's kind of how it's just supposed to be. Yeah, because Yamoja does warn her very early on that if she were to ever feel, you know, some type of love for anyone, um, she would be turned into a spuma, which is foam. So, yeah, sea foam, pretty much. And so mm-hmm. she always has that in the back of her mind. She always has the... Um, she just always knows that she can't cross a boundary between any of the humans. And I, and I definitely felt for her too, as well as you, Chelly, because... I just love the way that Natasha wrote her more specifically, like the way that she wrote her emotions, because even when she starts to feel jealous or envious of other people's relationships with each other, I was just like, damn, I know that she can never just let go for a moment Mm. because she knows that she can't have that. Yeah. And it's really sad, but, um, her her life immediately changes because there is one day where she is swimming um, next to a boat that is carrying a lot of slaves. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of waiting because she sees that sharks are kind of surrounding the boat. So she's like, yeah, that's kind of a signal that someone is about to be thrown off. Mm-hmm. And she sees someone get thrown off. But unlike the other bodies that are thrown off, this person is still alive. Yeah. And she kind of faces this conflict because she's like, okay, I'm supposed to collect the souls of the dead, but he's not dead. So, and it's so sad because I think it was the day before when Yamoja was like, don't forget your responsibilities. And she's like, don't worry, Queen, I won't. But then Queen, I would never forget. I would <laughs> never forget what you just told me. She sees this boy who's thrown out off of the ship and she just ends up saving him like she ends up uh, grabbing him swimming towards the shore and she starts nursing him back to health and can you remind me because this is the introduction of our character cola Mm -hmm. i don't remember how how cola reacts when he first sees her so in the beginning, I feel like it was so funny because immediately I loved Simi. I wasn't sure mm. about Cola because he, she she nurses him back to health, right? But his immediate response isn't to be like, oh my God, thank you so much for saving me. It's more of like, oh my God, I need to go back home because my family needs me. I know what you are. I know that you're a mommy wata, so I need you to summon Yamoja because she's going to help me, mm. you know, save my family and all that. And... Even Simi was like, um, you're welcome, I guess. So, yeah. And, and I, do, I do think that eventually he does thank her, but it, he's very much focused on getting to his family. Like the desperation was very evident in the beginning. And I understand why he would be so mistrusting. I mean, especially after what he had just gone through. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was kind of like his introduction, like our first impression of him. But I will say that I did end up loving his character, like the progression of his character and the growth. And when we slowly started to learn more about his family and why he was so desperate to get back to them, I, I definitely did love his character. Yeah, I would agree with you on that because I feel like that was a big thing with a lot of the human characters. The The sense of trust wasn't something that was automatic. It had to be built mm-hmm. on like a lot of things that Simi would do for them. Yeah, I know. And I definitely appreciated that, like 
that slow mm-hmm. progression, especially the relationship between Simi and Cola. Like it was so slow. Um, and yeah. so once Simi does um, summon Yemoja, Yemoja is immediately like, what the fuck? I just told you that you <laughs> can't. <laughs> Queen, sorry. <laughs> Queen, I'm sorry. You never told me that. Oh <laughs> She's like, my gaslighting God. Emoja. <laughs> Enough with the gaslighting. <laughs> you can't gaslight Emoja. She's like Emoja's queen. like, I literally told you I'm a queen. I'm a god. It's like, you never told me. You never Emoja, said that to me. You never, you never told me that. You, to- you actually told me the opposite. What I thought was um, kind of interesting because... Like to realize how set these people are, like the Mami Wata, and how loyal they have to be to um, Yamoja, that nobody else questioned their responsibilities. That when Simi tells her, Oh, well, I, I mean, you never told me I couldn't save someone. It just threw Yamoja off. She was like, what do you mean? I didn't I didn't know that I had to tell you that. Because yeah. her saving Cola was breaking a law for the Mamiwata. So they, they were in danger now of being punished by all who mm-hmm. uh, That is the creator of everything. So the only way that Simi can really fix what she's done is go to the creator, Ola Demer, and ask for forgiveness for what she's done mm-hmm. in order to like undam the Mamiwata. And so the way that she has to summon Olu Dumer is by obtaining two obsidian rings. And the two obsidian rings are being uh, held onto by a priest. And it just so happens that Cola knows who this priest is because where he lives is right next to his hometown. So he tells her, well, you know, you're already going that way anyway. So they decide to do this like quest together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip forward a little bit because throughout, because I want to talk more about the main island part of the journey, but I just want to say throughout Simi and Cola going to his home, mm-hmm. uh, they do get a lot closer. And I kind of really love <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the way that they are seems like it's things that they can't control doing, like just I little know. touches or being close little to glances. each other or reaching out when one of them walks away. What really Dude. like got to me <sighs> was when they would be in close proximity because, you know, maybe she would slip or something because... Yeah. She is so used to being in the water that sometimes she gets pains when she's in her human form for too long. And so there were a lot of moments where he would have to like hold on to her or help her up or just like, you know, be close to her. Yeah. And she would be so overcome by his smell that it would throw her off and she'd be like, oh, my God, focus, focus. And, and I it's just funny because love that. like she's not human either and although she's gaining parts of her humanity back Mm -hmm. um you can tell not all of it is completely back because there was one point where he got really close to her and she was getting nervous but the way that like natasha bowen described it was simi was feeling this weird feeling in her stomach when she knows something's wrong and it's like oh that's so i know i freaking loved it I, I like I mm-hmm. like that attention to detail of her character. So by the time they reach Cola's home, they've mm-hmm. already developed a trust like big enough for him to like want to continue this journey. You know what I mean? Like the so, idea of her going off on her own kind of stressed him out a little bit. Yeah, and he would constantly like be concerned too because she technically doesn't have to wait for him or stay, mm-hmm. but she does. And even them being in Cola's home when she's introduced to Cola's mom, at first she's untrusting. And you can see it, but it's because they just really care about Cola. Yeah. And I think ugh, you need to remind me the name. The person who is Cola's friend who was supposed to marry him. Yinka. So Yinka was actually betrothed to him. Dude, that was so juicy when they revealed that. I was like, damn. I could have had it all. <sighs> Dude, but I fucking loved her because everyone just loved Cola and they wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to get hurt. 
But when Cola reveals to certain people like, oh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Simi. She saved me. Uh, Mm -hmm. I really loved seeing people immediately like adore her for that. They were just like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Like, like we're indebted to you pretty much. Like that's how much they like appreciated her for that. Yep. Um, I do really want to say that I loved that scene because it was sad. That scene where she is meeting Cola's family and she gets this memory of when she was human and it's just her cooking with her mom Mm -hmm. and it was food for her dad and it was just a very wholesome moment Mm -hmm. and it's sad because even though this book has a lot of found family it's as if Simi knows that she can never have that so even if it's presented to her she can never accept it because she's a mommy wata yeah exactly it's almost like it's enticing her right like yes you're on Mm -hmm. this very very important quest but Look at this cute family. Yeah. This could be you one day, possibly. Oh God, it's so sad because she's just on the sidelines all the time, even though you can tell Cola doesn't want her to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's trying to include her more in you know, his home. Uh, but obviously, I think she just always reminds herself that I can't. I can't have this. Yeah. But there's oh, a character we totally yeah, forgot I to was mention. Say that right now. Are you fucking thinking about Isa? <laughs> yeah, because so <laughs> so during their journey, before they even get to Cola's hometown, which is Oko, they yeah. uh, stumble upon this uh, little. I, I can't remember if it was an island or if it was just like in the midst of the woods. They are in this place, which is a home for the Yumbos, which are pretty much like smaller people, I believe. And yeah. one of the characters is named Isa, and he's uh, a, like a young, he's young. And when he learns that they need to get to Oko to get to Cola's hometown, he's like, I can take you guys there. I know all of the secrets, guys, okay? I know like the um, secret pathways and whatever, like the fastest way. And so they agree. And it's so sad because Isa is definitely just, he's just a boy, right? And he yeah. tries so hard to form this connection with the both of them. And him and Cola immediately clicked, right? Which caused a mm-hmm. bit of jealousy with um, Simi because she was like, damn, like, I can't, I can't have that. And so she was a little bit, I feel like in the beginning, she was mistrusting towards him. But I think it was yeah. mostly because of her jealousy and there was a yes. moment where Issa is having them go through this like faster route but then a creature pops out of the water and hurts Cola and well like they it attacks them but I think Cola ends up getting hurt and mm-hmm. Simi's immediately like oh my god like I thought you knew this place really well like why would you take us here or you should have known you know kind of making him feel bad for his mistake and he was like i swear like they're never around this area at this like this time of the season and so i i just really i really loved him i really loved his relationship with cola because they definitely formed like a brother bond yeah but it was really sad too because when it starts getting to the end and they start realizing that they're gonna have to go to a far far away place that's going to be incredibly dangerous Mm -hmm. to get these rings um see me kind of comes to the realization like hey isa's really young he shouldn't be coming with us on this journey Mm -hmm. and cola agrees but you know he's he's a boy so he of course he's like no i could go i promise i'll be great like i won't cause any trouble and in order to shake him off cola's like you're not even family I don't even see you as a brother. You need to go. It's so sad, dude. Like, I was literally suppressing tears because he was like, because the thing about Issa was that he always wanted to be useful, right? He wanted to be helpful. Yeah. Like, even throughout the whole journey. So when, so the only way for Cola to get him to leave was to tell him, we don't need you. And that hurt me so badly. I was like, damn, that cut deep. But, Mm mm-hmm. Isa does sneak into the freaking boat, though, so he does end up going. But that was really sad, though, that he said that. Yeah. 
It was really sad. So they go on this boat. And can you remind me why they're going to this island? So when they get to Oko, which is Cola's home, um, the priest is like right next door, right? And so they go to the priest and see me telling him like, I really need these obsidian rings because I made this mistake and I, I just really need to talk to Oludumer. And the priest is like, damn, I really wish I could help you. But I actually gave them to the twins and the twins were actually taken by Esu or Isu? Esu. Isu. Isu. So we didn't mention Isu yet, but Isu is pretty much like the villain a of jealous the jealous god. Uh, yeah. He is right? like a... Well, is he a god? I don't know if he's a god. I think he is. I don't know. Um. So Isu is pretty much like the main villain of the story. And he is Alu Dumer's like messenger. Like his mm -hmm. right hand person pretty much. And he is known to be a trickster. So even from the very beginning, Yamoja warned Simi that you need to be careful during your journey because Isu will also want, you know, the same thing. Like he also covets the rings because if he has the rings in his possession, then he will be able to overthrow Olu Dumer and become, you know, all powerful. And so, yeah. so when they get to the priest, they're like, oh. He already took the twins. So the twins are mm -hmm. actually the reason why Cola was so desperate to go back home. The twins are his siblings. And yeah. the siblings are actually Orisas themselves. So they there's a prophecy for the twins where they will bring balance into the world. But, you know, if something happens to them, then it'll start causing like a rift and and through the journey, they do notice that things are like slowly dying. And then also Simi has these like visions or like these visions. dreams or like there's something that's telling her that, oh, in the future, everything's going to be dead. And so she knows that she has to get to the rings and then get to the twins before Isu. But obviously, once they get there, it's too late. And so I really like this moment, though, because... They form a plan, right, to get to the island, but mm -hmm. the way that they do it is they put the map or they make the map in Simi's hair. So I just thought that was cool that they added that there. So once they're going on their trip, they get on the boat and it's it's Simi, it's Cola, it's Cola's um, bodyguard, Ifedayo, which Ifedayo was um, like someone renowned in his like home and his dad yes. was pretty much like you can't go on this trip without him because i trust him with my life pretty much and mm -hmm. so he's there and then yinka which was his you know supposed to be betrothed but you know how that goes and bem mm -hmm. and isa but isa's hidden at the moment so it's and they them. don't know hmm? they don't know at this point right yeah they don't know when they're on the sh on the boat okay but they're on the boat and then everyone's sleeping and Simi kind of realizes, you know what, we're going to go against Isu. There's no way that we are going to win. So she needs oh. a backup plan, right? She yeah. needs to make sure that they are going to mm. win at the end. So what she decides to do is she gets into the water. She swims down into the deepest depths, which is pretty much like a prison. And she mm -hmm. finds an Orisa who is Olokun, and he is pretty much imprisoned there. And she makes this deal with him where he will help her, but she has to give him something in return. But at this moment, we don't know what that is because he whispers it into her ear and she just reluctantly accepts. Yeah. And it's really sad because when she comes back up to the boat, Mm -hmm. um is cola already awake everyone's awake at this point but cola's like the first one to go up to her and he was like really worried yeah. <laughs> because he was so sure that she had just left yeah he, he thought that she was gone i thought it was yinka who pulled her up no i could be wrong who cares just it, it might have been but i do know that at this point cola basically revealed to everyone yeah that he, he has to see me's a mommy wata 
He had to because everyone would have was like, where the fuck did she go? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe she's just walking around the boat and you're just not walking in the same spot. You ever think oh, of that? Oh, my God. You're so right. Because <laughs> it's such a big boat, huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, but it's it's a really, I guess, cute. I don't know how you want to say it, but it's a little endearing because no one is mad at her yeah. or scared of her. Everyone's mm-hmm. just kind of they okay accept- with it. and They just accept it. Yeah, even Yinka, she um, she doesn't talk to her at first, but mm-hmm. she, um, Cola's like, no, don't don't you see? She's looking at you in awe. But he's like kind of joking around. Uh-huh. But um, she does at this point and after this point become Simi's friend in a way. Yeah, like they actually form a connection together. And Yinka even tells her like, oh, I feel like I understand you more now. Mm hmm. But yeah, I love them together. I even highlighted a part when they were like talking. I was like, dude, Kinka and Simi forever. Forever, ever. Dude, yeah. I can't remember the scene, but there was one part where it was the first time Yinka smiled at Simi. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Dude. I love them. But they go on this, um, or they go to this island and there's like obstacle after obstacle these yeah. bitches these bitches oh. go through it and also there's a lot of creatures around as well yeah. because they're protecting isu i don't remember the order of how people die so do you want to remind me <laughs> pretty i don't remember exactly you know what it, it they hurt so much that one of them i blacked out so there's a <laughs> moment where there's like these hyena hybrids and mm-hmm. they're they uh, are in their human form after attacking yeah. them and they are talking to them and they're just like, hey, um, yeah, sorry, you're going to have to die. And so they look at Yinka and they're just like, hmm, you know, I think you're one of us <laughs> because Yinka actually was adopted into the Oko place, which which Cola's from. And so they don't really know her origin story, like like where she was born. And yeah. so they kind of hint at her, hey, we think you're a hyena hybrid like us, you know? And mm-hmm. so uh, there's a fight that happens. And then at the end of it, Yinka stays behind and she kind of looks at everyone. She's like, just go and just leave me, right? So Simi is the last one to look at her because everyone already went through like this. Um, I think it was like a cave or something or like they were going into like a little narrow pathway. Yeah. And so they're already, everyone's already off on the other side and Simi looks at her and she's just, she does end up leaving. But as she's leaving, she hears screams and she doesn't know exactly what happened, but they all assume that she's dead and I'm hoping she's not, but she might be. I don't know for sure. I'm hoping she's not either. Yeah. And then, um, oh, dude, Issa? <laughs> i was so stressed because he does end up dying and for sure like there's no there's no doubt about it um and i knew that it was gonna happen like i just knew it in my bones that we were gonna lose him because he was such a precious little character and yeah. so he when he ends up dying it's really sad because cola feels like like almost at fault because he promised Issa's father that he would make sure that nothing bad happens to him. Yeah. But obviously like Issa, like he should have gone home, but he didn't. So I, I don't remember what happened to Ben <laughs> at all. Do One you? moment Ben's there and then they turn around and they're like, and he's gone. Like, go? He's, <laughs> He disappeared. So at the end, it's just Simi, Cola, and Ifedayo. And then there's a little twist. A little a little twist that I was actually like surprised by. I don't know if you were surprised by it when you read this. Um, turns out that Ifedayo is actually Isu. He was like, yeah, Simi, I knew all along what you were doing. Like, I just... I was there with you the whole way. But um, I always, yeah. I, I don't know why, but I always love those moments like that villains have when they're like, oh, I, I knew what you were doing the whole time. Like, you know, like the hero thinks they're being super sneaky, but it's like, mm, no, I was actually watching you. 
from right up above mm-hmm. you. Damn. I was shocked too. I didn't expect it. No, I didn't but, either. Um, I mean, Isu is known for trickery. And I think yeah. it's kind of, I, I don't know. I didn't really mind that Isu wasn't completely in the whole story because he did loom throughout the story. Yeah. He <laughs> Does that make did. sense? Mm-hmm. You no, know no. something you didn't bring up? What? The fact that uh, there was one point where Simi was talking to Yamoja and we saw her face in scars. Oh, you're right. Okay. Dang. I feel like, you know what? If you're here, thank you. Um, so in the beginning when Yamoja it is upset because of what Simi did. Very, very beginning. Yeah, yeah, in the very, very beginning. Um, Yamoja has always been very beautiful, right, it's to Simi. But then Simi sees her a little bit more clearly in this moment. And she sees like a more vulnerable side to her because she looks completely distressed about what Simi did, like her breaking the law. And you see yeah. scars in her face. And mm-hmm. she kind of alludes to, oh, this is what happens when, you know, you disobey all of Dumer or, you know. And so they think that or Simi thinks that Isu did this because Olu Dumer wanted this to be done. Like he wanted to punish them. So obviously the stakes were higher, right? Because they think of Olu Dumer as someone who is not that very nice. And so, Yeah. I should have brought that up, but I totally missed that. But wasn't that something that Isu controlled? Was it? So it is revealed at the end that it was actually done just by Isu's judgment alone. Olu Dumer didn't tell him to punish Yamoja for what she had done in the past. But Isu was like, well, I mean, I know the best way to have done this. And so... I don't know yeah. like he he his thinking is just really crazy you know because he he does seem very unhinged but there was a moment where he's talking to see me and he's just like well how do you how do you know that I won't make this world better right and she was like yep. well I mean I don't know but <laughs> I, I feel like the way the way that he was going about it was just scary so I I want to talk about I want to kind of skip a little bit but when they see that Ifidayo is Isu, um, I think it's Kola who starts fighting him and is like, go get the twins. They mm-hmm. are both in cages. I, are they in the same cage? I believe so, yeah. They're both in a cage. You need to go save them, see me. And see me goes and doesn't really see Kola or Isu fighting, but is later approached by Cola, who's completely bloody and is holding a key and is like, hey, here you go. Here's the key. Get get my brother and sister out. But it's like super weird. Yeah, but at this point, she's already in front of the cage and she has already spoken to the twins for like a second. Because the twins yeah. are both kind of like, uh, who are you and where's our brother? And she tries to tell them like, no, he's, he told me to come down here and get you guys out. And so that's when he staggers in and he hands her the key. And mm-hmm. so she does end up opening the 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 cage. And what we had we have already kn- known this and the twins have the the rings, right? The obsidian rings, but the only way yes. to take it from them is if they give it to you willingly. Mm-hmm. And so Cola like tells them, "Okay, guys, we need to get out of here. We need to go before Isu comes back. Um, give me your rings." And uh, Taiwo, which was the little boy, he was, you know, no hesitation. He was about to hand it to him, but Kahinde, which is the girl, she was like, "Hmm, hmm, nah." She was like, "No." That's gonna and- be a no for me, Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have said that. But she says no, and they automatically see that it wasn't Cola. It's Isu. Just mm-hmm. fucking another trick up his sleeve. Because why I the know. fuck not? Because he's just a trickster. You know, he's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. A little clown. <laughs> I don't remember the beats of this part, but I do know that Cola uh, comes, and he's fucked up, right? They have this moment, see me and isu and then cola shows up and again they start fighting again and 
I love that Simi starts thinking like, okay, how do I, how do I beat him? And the only way to beat him is if she tries to outsmart him, right? And so she tells him, okay, um, if you can solve this riddle, I can tell oh, you, yeah. I can tell you where the, where the ring is because Taiwo had his ring, but Kahinda had hid her ring. And she was like, I can tell you where it's at. And obviously, Isui is the trickster, okay? He's the trickster. And so he was like mm-hmm. laughing about it. He was like, you're not going to win this one. And so yeah. she tells him the riddle. I, I don't remember the riddle, but I remember the answer was infinity. And yeah. he was so proud of himself, you know, gave himself a little pat in the back and everything. And so <laughs> they end up going into the water because that's where the ring is. And so they end up going yeah. into the water deep down into the depths. And then what happens, Chelly? Well, that was kind of completely planned because mm-hmm. remember, Simi's a mommy wata. She's a mermaid. So this is her elements. Yeah. So she fucks him up, dude. <laughs> and <laughs> I think she she like restrains him down there. So Isu is down there and she finds the ring and comes back up. So and Olu- Olukun had the ring and he gave it to her. Yes. But remember, she, I think at this point says, thank you for helping. And I will return my end of the bargain because she, remember, she did promise, promise something. something if he helped. Mm-hmm. So she goes back up and uh cola is there waiting for her and no cola is dying t- girl dying oh yeah you're right oh my god i fucking forgot Oops. <laughs> you blacked out <laughs> wait it's because okay i i do want to say because i i do want to say because i said this in the last episode throughout this entire like journey mm-hmm. like in this island i fucking thought cola was gonna die the whole time so when she finally got that ring i was like oh my god thank fucking god he didn't die (laughs) dude i was i I don't know i i just (laughs) was so happy you know and then she came up me too then she came up and that bitch was like already halfway gone you know yeah. like, and it was so was- so emotional because obviously she's been collecting souls i mean i know she's been on vacation for a while but she yeah. does start seeing like pieces of his soul or like you know his soul coming up and she's like oh shit we're losing him Hmm. i was stressed but but he does end up i think his soul does entirely leave his body right uh- I think so too. I, I'm not 100% sure, but the twins remember they're super powerful and the twins end up uh, reviving him. So the soul just, just yeah. goes back in. Literally. You know how souls do. Yeah. yeah, I love when they do that, honestly. Just go back in. And his, his eyes flutter and he's good. He's good. The end. You know? <laughs> I know. And then you should stop reading at that point, actually. Just, just stop. Just stop. Don't read. Don't read the ending. <laughs> it kind of sucks. You brought this up last time. And I do want to say that now that you brought it up, I kind of wish too that Simi would have told Cola about this bargain she made. I know. I wish that I it would have been brought up. Me too. Because I feel like it's so, I don't know. Like it just feels so much worse because obviously they, they did it, right? They they set out what they did. They saved the twins. Isu, dead. Well, he's gone. And Cola sees her and then he's like, okay, babe, let's do this. Not really. But, you know, he's looking at her (laughs) with hopes in his eyes. His eyes are sparkling. Babe, can I call you babe? (laughs) Don't make it weird. Hold my hand. (laughs) Babe, please. Please, babe. (laughs) It really sucks because the reason I think that Simi never said anything is I feel that if she had, she would have known that he would have done something that probably would have broken that barrier of like friends to something romantic. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the desperation of knowing that they their time is limited, then maybe they would have done something or, or tried to kiss or, or whatever. But Cola was aware that it was dangerous for her to do anything. And I think that's why he yeah. also never crossed that boundary. Because something mm-hmm. that we didn't bring up was that Isu would um, kind of like taunt her with it like that knowledge of you know her liking cola and knowing that that's what she wants right like she wants to kind of have this humanity again um 
And so he kind of mentioned it to her near the end. He was like, are you sure you don't want to be on my side? Because if you're on my side, I can make you human again. You know, very Ursula vibes. And she yeah. was just like, no, bitch, I'm loyal to Yamoja and Yamoja only. Um, but then he also did. I don't know. He he had that moment where we've talked about it in a, another episode where the villain or whoever is like, oh, you guys like each other, right? Oh, that sucks. You guys can't be together. Like, you know what I mean? Like when they, when they, yeah. when they, um, what is it called? When they get into the relationship drama or they, yes. I don't know. It, they, it becomes their problem, right? Yeah. Yes. And it sucks because, um, she does end up telling Cola. Does she? Does she tell him what's going on? Yeah. So, um, they have a moment and he's looking at her like, mm, okay, what happened? And she tells him that she made a vow to Olakun. And he's like, okay, how? When did this happen? And she tells yeah. him, you know, it was that day on the boat, whatever. And she tells him that Isu was right, that they could never be together. She says, I'm sorry, I should have told you earlier, but at least this way you're safe. And the twins and Oku. And he's just so like, okay, wait, what? What did you do? And so she tells him, she says, I agreed to help Olukun fight the loneliness he faces to shoulder the burden he bears. I promise to make the land of the dead my home. And that's when he's just yeah. like, you're leaving. And it sucks, too, because they, they're they standing and he has his hand on her back and it explains it. I love how this fucking part is written. It's it's explaining how um, Simi is crying. But as the tears are running down, she throws herself into the sea and the tears disappear with the sea as mm. she does, too. Yeah. Like and that's how the book ends. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. I love how Natasha writes. I I Me too. I need to get to the second book. Dude, same. And we didn't mention this, but it was a debut novel. This was her first. Wow, that is really I forgot that that was her debut novel because it's I think it she did an amazing job. Um for her first book, of course. So I think that's something that I never really I don't know. It's not that I didn't notice it, but I didn't like take it in you know mm. sometimes the dedications in these books are <gasps> yeah. so amazing let me read you the dedication in this book okay it says to my mom who couldn't read very well but made sure i did <sighs> it bro <laughs> that dedication i read that and it like made me teary eyed that is so fucking beautiful that is you told me that last time we tried filming this and that and was we the first time i had like, heard it i know we got a little <laughs> emotional at the end actually i know that's for real, for real. <laughs> emotional again Dude, um that's but that, that's really beautiful. sweet mm -hmm. <sighs> um okay but anything else you want to bring up about the story anything that happened the characters i just want to say that I really appreciate that even though this is a YA book, it still went above and beyond and tackled like really yes. like loneliness was tackled in a very realistic way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes mm -hmm. I feel with certain books and it doesn't even have to be YA. I feel like they want to rush to like the good part. They don't take the time to progress like their characters or make the relationships get to like a solidified point. You know what I mean? They want to get there immediately. So yeah, I appreciated that, that everything was kind of a process for all of them. Yeah, no, I, I definitely love that as well. And you brought up a point last time that I, I agree with. So you mentioned how sometimes in some YA novels, it kind of feels very mm, like, fan fiction-y <gasps> you said or, the word you or said I the word know. okay well how do i bleep <laughs> that word. we're trying I bleep to get it. monetized here i'm sorry okay whoa have we said any bad words yes we have me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cut to me saying like anyway doesn't matter um so because i feel like why novels sometimes rely heavily on certain tropes mm -hmm. and they don't really develop the tropes so it's very very rushed and that was something that I didn't really realize when we talked about it the first time because I definitely feel 
that this book did a great job for a YA novel. Not saying that we haven't read amazing YA novels before, but it you know when you read it and it's like, oh, wait, this is a YA novel? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. I just I was so in love with this book. After reading it, I'm already kind of like, I know who I'm going to get a copy of this book for cuz I'm fucking I know. <laughs> I want everyone to read this book. And that is something that I freaking love about Chelly. Like Chelly, anytime you read something that you really resonate with or you feel like will resonate with someone else, you'll literally buy them a copy of the book, which I think is so sweet. Well, we've all kind of developed um, kind of a habit of making this a community for ourselves. And I'm saying us mm -hmm. because it's you, me, and our friend Melissa. Because I love that mm -hmm. we annotate books. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> we annotate each other's books. I was talking to Melissa because um, we are going to get a copy of our book signed for a certain novel that we have. And mm -hmm. I was talking to our friend Melissa and I was telling her, because she was a little bummed because she's like, I'm not going to go to this book signing and I really wanted to go. But I don't know if I could get a book and just have you pick it up for me because it's under my name. And I told her, I was like, well, I bought a copy of the book unsigned. And I'm pretty sure when we go, we're going to get a signed copy. So I could just give you my book. Like, I don't have a problem with that. And she was like, oh, that would be really sweet. And I was like, oh, I hope you don't mind, though, that I, I'm going to annotate it a lot. And she was like, no, yeah. that makes it even better. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's really sweet. Oh, well, she already read it. So I know, you're dude. Gonna, you're not going to sway her thoughts or anything. <laughs> Oh that's my how, God. like that's i like i want you to annotate my books but then i'm like oh but what if she sways me what if she brings up a good point <laughs> you like white out the parts you don't agree with i know i'm like um she never said that <laughs> but it's really sweet because we've done that with each other's books too i feel like it just it's it's like you're reading with someone you know what i mean uh-huh yeah we would definitely recommend it's so fun i always look forward to seeing what you have to say about certain parts yeah I just want to, I just want to add one thing. Um, there was a moment that I really, really appreciated that happened. So there, so they come across a slave ship, right? Um, in, in the beginning of their journey to Oko. And when they come across this slave ship, they realize that it's actually been overtaken by people liberating slaves. And the main person's name is Aboyomi. Yes. A Aboyomi. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there was a moment when Aboyomi looks at Kola and Kola, I don't know if he tells him that he was in a slave ship or if he can just like see it in his eyes. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, but I he about literally this. just hugs Kola and he's just like, he just says, I'm sorry that this happened to you. And it was such a, like, real, raw, emotional moment that I was so, like, it made me so emotional. And I was so glad that Cola was able to have that, like, you know. Yeah. Have someone, I mean, obviously it wasn't his doing, but. So, no, like, but I, have I someone understand who. Those two characters. Yep. yep. I appreciate it, too. I thought it was really good. Do you want to go to overall thoughts? So my overall thoughts of this book was that I absolutely loved this story so much. I was immediately um, connected to Simi's character. I loved the way that Natasha introduced her character, but also developed her character. I feel like it was very, very relatable. You know, that feeling of loneliness and longing for something that she couldn't have. And Cola's character as well, I thought was done so well. Like I ended up really loving him. I love how he just kind of has like this big brother feel to him, like because he, he cared for Issa and then he loved the twins and he protected them. And then everyone in his hometown loved him and respected him. So I loved both of the characters, but then together, and you know, not much happened really like it was like the tiniest little bit of crumbs here and there that we would yeah. get from them but i feel like i'm so in love with 
where their relationship is going or could go, I guess, because, you know, it didn't end very happy for them. But I I am rooting for them. I really, really want them to somehow be together, which, you know, at this point, like, there's no indication if that's even possible. Yeah. Which which I think makes this even more exciting. So I'm just excited to get to the second one. I loved the world that was that I love the world that this story had. And let me think. And just I don't know, like just the relationships in yep. it as well. What are you gonna um, give it? <laughs> I would give it a five out of five. I feel like this is definitely I know it's only February, but, Dude. but like this is definitely like one of the best books that I've read. Like I we've, love this book so much. We've been reading bangers after bangers. That's not Seriously. including Hellbent. I'm sorry. But not, you know. not including Hellbent, <laughs> not including Bound by Honor. Not oh my god. <laughs> sorry, I freaking repressed that one. Not including Honey Girl. <laughs> Just keep going. Dude, but it's I only feel left like it's with been, two. I feel like 2023, we're going to read really good books. You know what I mean? Oh, I feel mm, it. I feel it I in my so. bones. I really, really hope so. Um, I agree with you. I loved the relationship. And I also love like this type of forbidden love. Because usually mm-hmm. in that trope, forbidden love is very like societal sometimes where it's like oh you're not supposed to love me because of society but this one's like no if you love me i will turn into espuma foam (laughs) like you literally (laughs) can't love me so i i like that there's that sense of it's just no possible way that it could happen Mm -hmm. and it makes me sad but so excited to read the second one and so excited to see hopefully more of Simi actually being a mommy wada because we never really got to see that in the first book. So I am hoping for that. Um, yeah. I did want to kind of geek out, you know, you know me. <laughs> I really You're love geeking out. I really love the fact that this story followed the hero's journey really well. And yeah. if you know, Greek mythology, any type of mythology. A lot of stories back then that had to do with myths and legends always followed the hero's journey, which basically starts with a character who is given this um, given this call to adventure. And they are given a little bit of supernatural aid and they go from the known to the unknown. And this journey like at the point of like everything being found out it usually ends with them dying and returning and it's a lot and i feel like our hero did this full circle and i'm so fucking excited like it made me so happy to see this because i like (laughs) recognized it and i was like yeah i'm fucking here for this shit and i fucking love that that whole journey you know that trope and everything and i i I obviously knew But I didn't know that it followed it so well, but it really does. I really enjoyed how this was written, too. I think it's just Natasha Bowen's writing. She sounds so... It's, like, so beautiful the way that she writes. She's able to convey emotions Mm -hmm. and feelings so well. And Mm -hmm. she doesn't, like, sacrifice anything in it. So she won't sacrifice, like, character development or characterizations to make them feel a certain emotion because i feel like sometimes with writing because you want the audience to feel a certain way sometimes your characters will act out of character for you to hate them for you to feel bad Mm -hmm. for them and it just it felt so realistic to read this story and i can't wait to read the second one i don't know if we're going to read the second one on the podcast but honestly if you wanted to i'm Uh, so down yes we are (laughs) dude okay good (laughs) I was nervous. Of course we are. <laughs> this feels kind of you know like what? cancel our plans. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this feels kind of like Bridge Kingdom. How when we I read know. it, we were like, "Wouldn't it be funny if we read the second one?" And then we, did. <laughs> we and then we did that night. <laughs> if you think about it, we've done that twice. Because then after that, we read Battle of Blood, and then immediately read <gasps> oh, Queen of right. Myth and Monster. <laughs> wow, this year. <laughs> going lot, strong i know i fucking oh yeah and then ninth house and and help it yeah, right mm, right oh, dude <laughs> well that was that wasn't because we were like whoa it's so good let's read that wasn't willing <laughs> that was forced 
<laughs> we're so mean dude it was so funny i went to target the other days with my brothers and i was pointing uh-huh. at books and i was like i read that one i haven't heard of it i'm you know i was pointing and then i saw helmet and i was like don't read this don't read it don't even look at it <laughs> <laughs> and they were like we weren't going to read any of these actually i know <laughs> <laughs> that's what my brother does to me too he's like you know i don't really read hardly ever so <laughs> don't worry i won't i promise <laughs> but i would also i didn't even say it i'd also give this story a five out of five it was a fucking good read and like i said i guess you right so you know i guess i'm getting good at this i don't know <laughs> i don't know dude maybe you are um but thank you so much for listening if you are listening to us in podcast form whether that be spotify apple Podcasts, amazon music or anywhere you get your podcasts on thank you so much if you can leave a rating of five stars and a review letting us know how we did you know it really helps mostly with the ratings it really um i feel like it exposes and recommends us more to others Mm -hmm. so thank you for those of you who are doing that and if you haven't just take a few seconds and do it right now yeah we would we would really really appreciate it if you would like to tell your friends family loved ones about us um, exposure is best done through word of mouth if you are watching us on youtube thank you if you can like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell because we post every tuesday slash thursday when our audio is not playing tricks on us when the stars are aligned because damn (laughs) it's been a rough week and if you want to just support us even more, just like a little more, um, join just go our above and beyond. Join our Patreon because we're trying to form a community of readers, and it would be really nice for you to join us there, just to get a little bit of extra behind the scenes stuff too. Yeah, we're gonna have exclusive content on there, and we also want our listeners to become more involved in the episodes that we make, and I think that would be a great way. And hopefully, eventually, we can even form like a book club or something. Dude, I know that would be so fun. But if you're interested, go ahead and find us on patreon.com slash book fix. And if you want to follow us on social media, we do have an Instagram that we are going to have to be more active on ever since that TikTok scandal. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, it is at the book TikTok scandal. Oh my gosh. I'll talk to you after we say bye. Um, at the book fix pod, T H E B O O K F I X P O D. If TikTok is still up, follow us on TikTok uh, at the book fix, T H E B O O K F I X. Thank you. <laughs> TikTok just, just um got in trouble with the American government recently. For what? Apparently, it's spyware. But I'm I'm trying to think of like, okay, if they got a hold of our TikTok, what are they going to see? <laughs> what are they going to see? All of, all of my drafts are already gone, so. And all of my drafts are me just like using the same audio in different angles. So you're not going to find much. <laughs> so really, who's torturing who, okay? <laughs> I know. It's funny. I could see our FBI agent looking at it right now. And he's just like, oh my God, the bridge kingdom. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> again damn (laughs) these girls just don't stop (laughs) no but why don't we end our episode like we usually do um yahira is going to roll a dice and if it lands on an even number we read a positive review of this book and if it lands on an odd number we read a negative review on this book um we are not connected to this these reviews at all we just read them and we leave them in the air we don't talk about them unless you want to join our patreon where we can talk about them but yes, um exactly. <laughs> but go ahead and roll your dice okay all right we got a five which is an odd number so i'm going to read a negative review of this book and just to let you know mm. this book overall it looks like it got more four star reviews do you ever notice how goodreads goes down very often but storygraph doesn't just wanted to let you guys yeah, know that's why storygraph is superior <laughs> i'm just saying like you know i'm just i'm just saying you storygraph this year yeah and also storygraph has you know you can do 3.25 3.75 mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. more accurate thank you so let's go ahead. Um, on Storygraph, it does have 
a 3.85 overall rating. Let me go ahead and read a negative review. It's kind of hard because can you set them in order by no, stars? That's that's the only thing that um, I wish Storygraph would do is you can't filter through them. So you just have to kind of scroll um, down until you find a okay. negative one. I found one. <laughs> so okay. this... Okay. This was written by Hissing Potatoes, which honestly love that name. Is that your government name? Please let me know. Gave it <laughs> a it, two is stars. It hissing Potatoes? Hissing. Or is Hissing Potatoes the first name? No, the full name. Hissing Potatoes. Kissing? Hissing. Like a cat. Like a snake? Yes. Okay. Hissing Cute. Potatoes gave this a two out of five stars and wrote... I loved exploring West and Central African mythology in a Little Mermaid retelling, but the narrative was slow and dry for me. The characters, one-dimensional. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye! Bye. Um, are you ready? Dude, it's tomorrow. <laughs> am I ready? It's funny I'm- because... It's tomorrow for us, but yes. it already happened for If you're listeners. watching this episode on Tuesday, it already happened. If you're yes. here with us somehow, our FBI agent, it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. <laughs> just our FBI agent. Does that mean it's two? <laughs> like, do we each No, we share one? the same or one. we just have one? We share the same Aww, one. Cute. I love, I love that. that. Love that for him. Love that for us. Oh, um, my God, So dude. I will tell you, I don't know if you've noticed, but I started. Dude, don't say anything. I haven't been able I'm to not- start. Oh, do you want to know how far I am? Yes. I think I'm at 41%. Dude, how? Oh my gosh. I just saw you. You just saw me, dude. <laughs> it I like surprisingly how... was on Scribed. And for the people listening, we're talking about Infinite Threads by Tahira Mafi. Yes. I'm surprised it's on Scribed so early. Maybe Tahira yeah, Mafi was like, get on it. Really get funny. Because I'm having a book signing. Hurry up. Really funny, um, Tahere Mafi, that, you know, it's so fast on Scribed, but for some reason, every fucking Target I went to, it wasn't there. I don't know. I just got to I know. I was at Target, too, and I didn't see it there. I thought about you. Oh, um, thank you, dude. I So, to our listeners, we're going to give you a little, a little sneak peek. So, we're going <laughs> to actually go to a book signing yeah. for Tahere Mafi's these infinite threads which we talked about this woven kingdom if you haven't listened to it please check it out um and yeah so we this is probably the only release that all three of us were excited about so you me and melissa and my sister who apparently was also really excited which i don't even want to give her that one i don't even want to give her that one dude no she was not (laughs) she's lying my sister hates everything (laughs) <laughs> she's a I love Virgo, my sister. So. I know. I love my sister. I love she's your so sister critical. Too. Yeah, well one of us has to be. 